do you get involved much in terms of in terms of adjusting the rig within a boat to kind of get those arcs to match up, or do you rely more on the technique of the oarsman to, to try to? I'd say the them? latter. I'd say early in my coaching career, you know, rigging rigging was uh, very much in vogue in the '70s, '80s, early '90s. It, you know, there was the magic there. You get everybody in the same. Uh, uh, I'm a real, real stickler on having catch angles be identical, mm -hmm. and a real sticker on having the blades exit at the same point in time. What are the adjustments you're making to? to uh, mostly, it's with the catch. athletes themselves. Okay. You know, amount of amount of track they use into the stern. If I've got somebody who's six two. In the boat, he's going to have to have heels to wheels, uh, drawing higher. So, you know, at the finish, it's the it's the height of the handle that's going to determine the, the length of time the blades in the water. Right. It's not this faux layback. Right. You know. Uh, so I'm a real stickler about having constant, consistent uh, matches at those two angles. Uh, and you know, I'm not. You know, certainly. It's very, very important. If you want to get those angles, you've got to get the right footboard angle. You've got to get the right depth of the, you know, the seat to the heels. All those things are very, very important. The height of the lock. All those pieces are very, very important if you get somebody comfortable in a boat. Now, there's, it's, it's hard for young coaches to get advanced information about that like where do you recommend kind of the as someone coming in working in may, maybe not necessarily a, a novice crew but even someone working with a young varsity or um to where they're going to learn right you know how do we, how to use that foot stretcher angle or that the ankle height I, or I, I think i think you can read that i mean i think for example uh yeah i don't know what okay. the source of that would be uh, other than you know, talking to somebody who knows what they're doing. Right. Uh, you know, if somebody's got real long legs and a short t torso, their knees will be up hitting their nose. So get get the feet down. Yep. Get the feet down a little bit. So, you yeah. know, that kind of thing. And where do you balance between lower and feet raising seat with you a pad? You can do both. Yeah. You can do both. You can do both. Uh, that's that kind of thing. Uh, you know, football angle. You know, if they tighten the ankles, which most people are, you know, put it out, you know, lay it a little bit flatter. Uh, are you working much with position of the pin and inboard, outboard lengths of the oar? Or are you doing it mostly with the, with, within the cockpit of the boat versus the rigging? Uh, no, I'll, you know, I have a standard spread, 83 right. and a half centimeter spread, you know, 13 and a half, 376 oars. I mean, that's just standard. Yeah. I use that year after year after year, and if it's a screaming headwind uh, over a long race, I might put a clam on it, uh, but rarely. I don't even think I've ever done that here at Yale. It would take you know, extreme conditions. We, we train in extreme conditions. We train in headwinds, we train in tailwinds and crosswinds. Yeah. <laughs> People are always mucking around with a load. I don't know. <laughs> Is it really necessary? Right. Um, That's where experience helps. <laughs> I've watched an example of that. It was somewhere in the 80s. <laughs> in the Redwood Shores Regatta. And I was coaching at Brown. And uh, it was some kind of round robin, but we raced Northeastern. Uh, the first... You know, in one of the first races and beat him by three or four seats and it was neutral conditions. And then fog was coming over the hill for the finals and we were matched up against them again and their coach, you know, lightened their load. I left the load the same, same result, beat him by three or four seats. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs>